from the very beginning, God wanted us, his children, to inherit his kingdom. Now, when Jesus spoke about the kingdom, he spoke of it in two phases. The first phase is about our reality as living in the kingdom today, as citizens on the earth in this age. The second phase that Jesus often spoke of was how the kingdom will be when he returns. And when he returns, oh, it's going to be something else. He's going to literally bring his physical throne down on this earth. There will be no other government on this earth. There will be no other sovereign. His name will be the only name. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess Jesus is the only Lord. And not to mention, you will have an immortal body. But that's another topic. One day we're going to get into what that's going to be like. But now. Okay, that's the future, but now you are already a citizen of God's kingdom, which means we better make sure we understand exactly how kings operate. When Jesus was on the earth, he repeatedly talked about the kingdom of God. And when he talked about it, he spoke of it in two phases. The first one it's when he would talk about how the kingdom of God is active now and how it relates to our everyday life. But he also spoke about the second phase of the kingdom, which is how the kingdom will be when he returns. For example, in Luke 17 verse 21, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. You see here he was talking about the first phase, how the kingdom of God is present and active today. And also in Luke 11, verse 20, he said, If I cast out a demon with the finger of God, then the kingdom has come upon you. Here again, he's talking about the first phase of the kingdom, how the kingdom is active today and how through God's spirit, it has given us dominion, even over demons. So the first phase of the kingdom is about our present reality of being a kingdom citizen today. But the other times he would talk about the kingdom, is when he would mention how it would be when he returns. You see, Jesus always talked about both phases of the kingdom because it's equally important to understand how the kingdom operates both today in life and how it will operate at his return. For example, uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 24, Jesus was explaining to the people what would be taking place on earth leading up to his return. So here he was talking about the second phase of the kingdom. And that's why in Matthew chapter 25, he says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took out their lamps to go and meet the bridegroom. And he says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will, will be like this. See, in that phrase, at that time, he's referring to the future state of the kingdom, how it will be when he returns. Again, he talked about the second phase of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47, when he said, The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake, and it caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore, and they sat down and collected the good fish in the baskets and threw the bad away. He says, This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous. So again, he was talking about the second phase of the kingdom, how it will be at his return. So he always talked about both phases of the kingdom. So let's start breaking it down. Basically, even now, we have dominion over the earth. We are citizens of God's kingdom and servants of not a president, but a king. But the time will come when you receive even more. <laughs> Remember, Jesus said that when he returns, you will receive a crown. First Corinthians 9.25, Paul writes, we will receive a crown that lasts forever. Second Timothy 4.8, Paul said, there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord will award to me on that day. What day? The day he returns. And look at this. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So you too are going to get a crown when he appears on that day. First Peter five verse four. And when the chief shepherd, Jesus appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. <laughs> so 
why is Jesus going to give you a crown when he returns? You see, now we're talking about the second phase of the kingdom. He's not going to give you a crown just for decoration. He's not going to give you a crown just because it looks pretty. It's cute. No. When he returns, he's going to give you a crown because he is coming back as the king of kings. He's not coming back as the king of servants or the king of just citizens. He's coming back as the king of kings. You see, when Jesus returns, your kingship will reach a new level. He will give you a crown because you will be a ruler with him. Remember, Jesus said that if you believe in me, you will inherit the kingdom. And even Paul said that in Christ, we are co-heirs. Now, to be a co-heir is to inherit something with equal ownership. This is why when Jesus returns, you will receive exactly what Jesus inherited from the Father when he was resurrected. You will be a co-heir. You see, the moment you accepted Christ... Jesus became your model. He called God Father. You called God Father. He walked on the earth as a human. And of course, today you are a human. The kingdom was within him. The kingdom is within you. But for you to be a co-heir, you must not only receive what Jesus had when he was a mortal human. You must also receive what he had after he was resurrected. Notice what Paul said in Romans 8, verse 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. So I ask, what two things did Jesus receive after his resurrection that we also will receive? Trivia question. Well, the first thing Jesus received after his resurrection was a new immortal body. And when he returns, you will receive one too. As Paul writes, 1 Corinthians 15, 49, And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, when Jesus returns, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. In Philippians 3, 20, he writes, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will, here it is, transform our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body. So one thing that Jesus received after he was resurrected that we too will receive is a new immortal body that's just like the body Jesus had.